So in the last class, we have discussed about the Bose atomic model. So in this Bose atomic model, we have discussed that it is applicable for the atoms having only one electron. So that is basically for hydrogen atom. And in this, we have also learned the defects of Bose atomic model. That means this Bohr's atomic model is applicable for hydrogen atom as well as Niels Bohr unable to explain why the spectral line has been splitting into so many spectral lines in presence of highly high resolution spectroscopy. So this is the main defect of Bohr's atomic model. So to rectify this defect of hydrogen atom derived by Bohr, Sommerfeld is another physicist who tried to rectify, who tried to rectify the postulates given by Niels Bohr. So he tried, he took the Bohr's atomic model and he tried to rectify why the spectral lines in the, why the spectral lines of hydrogen atom are splitting into so many spectral lines when it is placed in the presence of high resolution spectroscope. What Mr. Sommerfeld has done? Sommerfeld has added elliptical orbits to each, each orbit of Bohr. That means according to Bohr, we know that the, the orbits are named as K, L, M, N, O like that and also they can also be named as N is equals to 0, N is equals to 1, N is equals to 2 and so on like that. So to, to these orbits, Mr. Sommerfeld has added elliptical orbits. The first shell of Bohr that is K shell or it can also be called as small n is equals to 0. The first shell of Bohr to the first shell of Bohr, he didn't add any elliptical orbit to this. And from the second shell of Bohr, that means from the shell L onwards, he added each elliptical orbit to each Bohr's orbit. That means the first orbit contains no elliptical orbits. The second Bohr's orbit, that is L shell, contains one elliptical orbit and the third Bohr's shell that is M shell it contains two elliptical orbits and the fourth shell contains three elliptical orbits. If we take fifth shell it will contain four elliptical orbits. Like that Mr. Sommerfeld has added elliptical orbits to each orbit of Bohr except the first shell. Let us try to understand what these are. And these are very important in understanding the quantum numbers which we are going to discuss in the next class. So quantum numbers are very important in understanding the suborbitals of an atom. So, so in understanding the quantum numbers, so this topic is very important to understand. So here, let us try to take each shell of both. The first shell. K shell. So just before we have discussed that, to the first shell of Bohr, Sommerfeld has not added any elliptical orbit. So we know that it can also be called as n is equals to 1. What is m here? This small n denotes the principal quantum number. We discuss about this quantum number in the next class in detail. And what is this small l? The value of small l is 0 here. Because he didn't add in any elliptical orbit to the first shell. And what is small l here? This is called as angular momentum quantum number. So we discuss about this also in the next class detail. So let us take the second shell of Bohr. So this is called as L shell, and this can also be called as n is equals to 2. So this can also be called as n is equals to Two. And here, as per the Sommerfeld's theory, he added one elliptical orbit. 
the one is this one is L is equal to zero, and the newly added elliptical orbit, which is called as its value is L is equal to one. And let us go to the third shell of Sommerfeld, that is Bohr. The third shell of Bohr is called as the M shell, or it can also be called as n is equal to three. So here, this shell, M shell, is it is its value is L is equal to zero. And it, just before we have discussed that, for the third shell of Bohr, he added two elliptical orbits. One is L is equal to one, and the second one's value is L is equal to two. And if we take the fourth shell. That is n shell, and it can also be called as n is equals to four. And this n shell, its shell value is zero. And to this, he added to the fourth shell of Bohr. He added three elliptical orbits. So the first one, its value is l is equals to one. The second one, its value is l is equals to two. And the third elliptical orbit's value is l is equals to three. So by adding the elliptical orbits. Sommerfeld tried to explain the splitting of a spec, the reason for the splitting of a spectral lines of hydrogen atom, but he unable to succeed completely. To rectify this, to know the complete picture of an atom, another quantum theory, another atomic model has been developed. So it was developed by Mr. Max Planck. So Max Planck is a German physicist. So he has he has contributed a lot to the development of quantum theory, which is the most important branch of physics. So the quantum theory has been developed by Mr. Max Planck. So what the quantum theory says? So actually. Electrons, as per the before theories, we discussed that electrons are revolving around the nucleus in some orbits. Can we find the position of the electron, or can we find the velocity of electron? So it is very difficult to find the position and the velocity of an electron because atom is the smallest particle. We cannot see atoms itself, and these electrons are. Present inside the atom. That means these are subatomic particles. So it is very difficult to identify the position of an electron with our naked eyes because it is too small. How to identify the how to identify the position of an electron? To do this, to identify the position of an electron, we need to send a light ray. Which has very low wavelengths. That means to identify the position of an electron, we need to send the light rays having very low wavelength, very less wavelength. When these less wavelength light rays are passed through the atom, and these electrons which are present inside the atom, they will be excited, and they will change the orbit when the electron. Has excited, it changes its orbit. That means, before dispersing an electron, before dispersing the light rays, it is moving in some paths. When the light rays are dispersing on it, it will excite and change its orbit. So, if we stop uh, focusing the light rays, it will complete its original path. That means, electrons are not revolving in particular shells, particular orbits continuously. When the light rays, that means when some light rays are focusing on it, they are changing the path. When the light rays are not focusing, they are moving in the original path. That means by this we can conclude that electrons are not revolving. Electrons are not moving in particular paths or particular orbits. And it is finally proved that it is quite impossible to find. The position and velocity of an electron at the same time, and uh, this was uh, explained by uh, Mr. Schrodinger. Mr. Schrodinger, he has given, he has tried to understand the nature of an atom and the nature of the electron. 
So according, according to the Schrodinger's theory, he tried to uh, locate the electron inside an atom. So by his theories, he has concluded and he has given the definition for an orbit. Finally, so uh, an electron doesn't move in circular paths. And where the electron is? The electron can be present inside the atom around the nucleus anywhere. That means there is probability of finding electrons somewhere around the nucleus inside the atom. So this was concluded by Mr. Schrodinger. You can learn about the Schrodinger's equation in your first year of intermediate. In chemistry, you will learn about this in detail. So Schrodinger finally given definition to an orbit. What is an orbit according to the quantum mechanical model? According to quantum mechanical model, an, an orbital has defined like this. That is the probability of finding electron around the nucleus inside the atom. So that means electron may present somewhere around the nucleus inside the atom. We know that nucleus is very small in size and around the nucleus there is a lot of empty space inside the atom. So in this empty space, electron may be present somewhere in this empty space. So finally, the definition of orbital has been changed like this. So these are the important uh, things we need to remember according to, uh, regarding the structure of an atom. So in your intermediate first year of chemistry, you will learn some more uh, theories that is de Broglie's equation and also Schrodinger's equation you will learn in detail in your first year of intermediate. And here after this we will discuss about the quantum numbers and these are very important to learn in this 